Hey everyone, I wanna talk about back-to-back -back bar charts. These are great data visualizations to use when you have two groups uh, of things or people to compare across many different items. So in this example, this is from like a museum or a theme park exit survey, and we're looking at first-time visitors compared with repeat visitors. And we have a bunch of different ratings that we ask them on our exit survey, our visitor satisfaction survey, from friendly staff interactions, entertaining experience, etc. And we can see how first-time visitors rate their satisfaction satisfaction compared to repeat visitors. So in this case, you can see that most of them are pretty comparable. First time visitors and repeat visitors are fairly similar on many of them, except for two big ones really stand out to me in this way in how we visualize the data. And you can see right there down at educational experience, 55% of first time visitors um, provided higher satisfaction ratings than 25% uh, of repeat visitors provided those same ratings for educational experience. So first time visitors rated their educational experience higher than repeat visitors. And then all the way down to food and beverage satisfaction, I see that 40% uh, of first-time visitors provided these satisfaction ratings versus 60% of repeat visitors. So this is a really nice way to sort of highlight that comparison, um, and it really makes it pop out in this sort of way when you do this back-to-back -back sort of bar chart. Another way that you could highlight some of this data, uh, this is the exact same chart, but I use color to really call the attention to the point that I wanted people to understand. And that was the educational experience in this case. So all the other data I grayed out except for that educational experience rating, I wanted to highlight that in the both in the chart and then also in the chart title using that color. Now, another way that we've used back-to-back -back bar charts is not by percentages or ratings, but by counts of people. So we actually had a project where we were doing a program evaluation uh, for a group of teachers and students that were at the museum for a long period of time. And we had a discussion with them in the beginning about how they wanted us to do evaluation. What methods did they want us to use to collect data and feedback from them throughout their experience? And so we gave them a list of different ways that we could possibly collect data or provide feedback or have discussions with them. And so we compared what the students selected versus to the uh, compared to what the teachers selected. And we had a total of eight students and we had a total of five teachers in the group. And from this way, when we're using a back-to-back -back bar chart like this, you can really see the differences. So students pref much more preferred things like peer-to-peer -peer interviews and group discussions than teachers. Teachers didn't want those methods. And then teachers really wanted the pre to post survey and video journals, and students really didn't want the video journals or the pre and post surveys. And then the other two, photo journals and written journals, were selected by kind of an equal number of teachers and students. So this was another great way that we could use to sort of compare um, how students and teachers felt on that um, particular uh, particular question that we asked them. Now another way, a little bit more visually engaging, I could use this exact same chart, but instead of the bars, which are pretty common to see, let's use icons. So instead I just used these generic sort of people icons, and then I gave data labels at the end so we knew exactly how many people were in that group. But these are really uh, easy ways to sort of visually engage your reader, and I did all of this in Excel and PowerPoint, and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. All right, so you see how my data is set up here. I have my first time visitor, my repeat visitor data here, and my satisfaction items here in column A on the left. Now I see you also, or you also see that I have these two buffer columns labeled, and this is how we have to make that back-to-back -back bar chart. It's kind of how we hack Excel a little bit uh, in some of their default bar chart, uh, bar chart types, because uh, we know that a back-to-back -back bar chart is not one of Excel's defaults. So we have to work with what their defaults are and sort of hack behind the scenes uh, and, and work with some of the editing, editing features to create this back-to-back -back bar chart. So the first thing here is I'm going to add this buffer uh, column here on the left and add another buffer column here on the right. And I'm going to input a formula here. And I'm just going to do, this is percentages, so I'm going to say equal 1, which is 100%, and then subtract the first-time visitor cell right here. I'm going to go ahead and push Enter. Now, I've created this as a dynamic uh, Excel table, which I'll, which I'll do another tutorial about. Um, but once you put one formula in, it's going to copy that formula down the entire row. So that's why they all sort of appeared there. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put equals 1, that's 100%, and then minus this cell directly next to it in the repeat visitors there. 
All right, so now you see that this is actually kind of like this column equals 100% and this column equals 100% too. And we're going to make a stacked bar chart and we'll see how it looks once we do that. So you take your cursor, drag the entire chart area here. We're going to go up to the insert tab. We are going to go to the bar chart series right here and then go down to the stacked bar chart here. We have this clustered bar chart. That's not what we want. This is a uh, stacked bar, not 100%. And then this is the 100% percent stack bar that's what we're going to go for in this chart so go ahead and click on that and now you can kind of see you have the bones uh, of this chart now this is what your Excel uh, default will sort of look like here, but you can kind of already see that I have this diverging line here in the middle, and then the back-to-back -back bars are here, but the buffer uh, data are in these bars, and all I'm gonna do is, is basically, I'm not gonna delete these data, but I'm gonna keep them there, but I'm just gonna color uh, this piece of data white, uh, or actually I'm gonna say no fill for this one, and, no, and make sure there's no line there, and I'm gonna do that for the other buffer column too, no fill and no line, now you can see this is a really cool back-to-back -back bar chart. The percentages aren't going to matter. So what I'm actually going to do here um, is I'm going to decrease the size of the x-axis uh, labels because I, I want to keep the axis here for some editing purposes that I'll show you in just a little bit. Uh, but I want to actually reduce the size of the, of the text just a little bit. And I'm going to make this white. I'm going to turn the text white so that we don't see the axis. It's not there. I'm also going to get rid of the grid lines. We don't need the grid lines. So I'm going to go ahead and click in the chart. You can see the uh, grid lines highlight, and I'm just going to push delete, and they're gone. The chart title we're going to type later, but I'm going to put that over to the left because we always like those to be left justified, left aligned. And let's see. Let's see what else can I do here. I'm going to uh, put the legend up at the top. So highlight the legend, go over. I'm going to right click. If this uh, formatting tab wasn't open on the right, I would right click and go to format legend. And then you can see you can put the legend on the top, put it to the left, right, top right. I'm going to actually put it on the top. I like it right there. And I, you can see that the buffer data are in the legend uh, because that's part of the source data, but we don't need that. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click to highlight only this buffer, buffer section and delete. I'm going to push backspace and that'll be gone. And I'm going to do the same thing with buffer two and then that'll be gone. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag this over to kind of position it. Um, I want to actually color these different um, different colors from my palette. So I'm going to go ahead up to the paint bucket in the format uh, tab over here, solid fill. I'm going to make this blue. And then I'm going to go over here to the repeat visitors. I'm going to make this orange. That's pretty nice. Now there's a lot of gap here. There's a lot of white space. So I want to kind of make the bars a little thicker, a little chunkier. So I'm going to go ahead and click on all of, uh, click on one section, which highlights all of the bars. Go over here to series format, uh, the series format tab over to this little bar chart icon here. You go to the gap width slider and it's always defaulted to 150% and that's refers to the, uh, the gap between um, the bars. And I'm just going to go ahead and decrease that and you can just go and click that down arrow and just watch as it decreases. I usually like to go all the way down to about 50%, maybe 30%. Let's go down to 50% here. Nice chunky bars. And I'm going to go ahead and put in some labels. So I'm going to click the bars. I'm going to right click. I'm going to add the data labels there into the bar. You can see they kind of show up here. So I want to edit them to be white. And I'm going to put bold. And then I'm going to go over here to that format data labels option here, that bar chart again. And you can actually uh, select where you want the labels. You can do center, inside end, which gives that like base uh, sort of positioning. And then inside base, that's what I like right there. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Right click, add data labels. Let's make those data labels white and bold. And we'll move that data position. Uh, into uh, the inside of the end. That looks great right there. Now there's one more thing uh, that I want to do. And actually first I can see that there's a border around my chart. I basically never want a border around my chart. So I'm going to highlight that, go over to the format chart area, and then under border it says automatic. I'm going to go and cut ahead and click no line. So now you can see there's no border around that chart. That'll look really nice. Um, and you can see the one more thing that I want to do is I want to get that nice line in the middle, the axis line to sit in the middle. And you could of course just draw a line and sort of just draw it there if you wanted to and get rid of uh, the axis axis line, but I'm going to show you how you can actually put this uh, this y-axis sort of line into the middle here by sort of hacking uh, the x-axis formatting. 
So that's why I kept the x-axis here. Remember that x-axis is kind of white and tiny uh, right down here, but I just highlighted it right here. I'm going to go ahead and right-click and format. Oops, it's, it left me there. There it is here. I'm going to right-click and format. Um, how do I get this here? Da -da -da. Format axis, perfect. And then I'm going to go over here. You can see the axis. It's at 0 to 1, which is 100%, because this is that 100% uh, stacked bar chart that we used. That's fine. We're not going to mess with that. But what I am going to do is go down here. It says automatic vertical axis crosses. And automatically it's set to this lowest position on the x-axis scale. Uh, if you did the maximum value, it would go over to the other side, the maximum value of the x-axis. But I want to do a custom axis value. And I know that this middle line is going to be at 50%. So I'm going to go ahead here and type in 0 0.5. That's 50%. And I'm going to go ahead and click Enter. And you can see now the line moved. And so did the labels. So I want to make sure that those labels stay over here on the left. So what we're going to do is make sure that that's highlighted. I'm going to go over here to the Format Axis menu, go down to the Labels uh, drop-down menu right here, and you can see that here it says Label Position. And I could do Next to Axis, which it is right now, or you could do High, and that would put it on the right, or you could do Low, and that's what I'm going uh, to keep. But then you can see that the line, the axis line, is now in the middle. My labels are over here on the left, and maybe I want to uh, format this bar a little bit more so it's a little chunkier, a little thicker. I'm going to go over here to my format axis options, not under fill, but under line, you can see it's automatically defaulted to this sort of gray color and then 0.75 weighting width. And I'm going to actually increase the weight to two, two points. And then maybe I'll change the color to something a little darker gray. And there you can see you have a beautiful diverging X uh, or Y axis line here in the middle of your chart. Uh, and you have the bar chart with the blue bars going left, the orange bars going right. And the entire thing is actually one stacked bar chart that you can update in this uh, chart staging area or this source data table right here. So that is pretty cool. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to do that that icon trick uh, where we put the icons into the bar chart here just like this. So click over to the next video and check out how we put icons into the bar chart.